Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for all. Thank you all for joining today's virtual session. Before we begin, elect us to acknowledge the land where we gather. Our elders have shared that is, it is important to acknowledge the land where we gather and the first peoples who traditionally live here. It shows respect for people, their contributions, and their ways of knowing, which are reflected through the stories and songs that have lived on this land for thousands of years. We are making this acknowledgement at the beginning of our gathering today to further demonstrate our commitment to work together as a community in laying the foundation for reconciliation through education. We would like to acknowledge the traditional territories and oral practices of the Blackfoot nations, which include the Sisiga, the Begani, and the Gaine. We also acknowledge the Satina and the Stony Nakoda First Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their homes in, in the Treaty 8 region of Southern Alberta. On this slide is our agenda for this evening. It outlines areas that will be covered. We will provide information about the student accommodation plan for the new schools in Auburn Bay and Mahogany. We will then provide time to respond to your questions that you might have. So please jot them down as you have them and as we go along. We will open up the chat window as we get closer to the question and answer period. Please ask your questions by typing them in the chat window at that time. For introduction today, I'd like to first introduce myself. My name is Latosa Campbell-Walters, and I'm the Director of Planning with the CBE. With me today are other representatives from the CBE, and I'll go through the list that's on the slide in the order as, as it appears. So we have Nancy Close, Trustee, Wards 11 and 13, Charlene May, Trustee, Wards 12 and 14, Danny Breton, Superintendent, Facilities and Environmental Services, and Ard and Mike Nelson, Education Directors for Area 5, Darlene Onro, Acting Air Education Director for Area 6, Laura Carlin, Principal, Auburn Bay School, Michael Hebbington, Principal, Riverbend School, Tracy Cohan, Principal, Sherwood School, Kim Manser, Principal, Andrew Sebald School, and Connor McCreesh, our Planning Analyst. Why do we need a plan? Construction on three new schools, two in Auburn Bay and one in Mahogany, currently indicates the possibility of an opening in September 2022. We hope to confirm the opening date shortly. If a September 2022 opening is possible, an adjustment of the boundaries and designation for students living in Auburn Bay, Seton and Mahogany is needed. The plan we develop and which we are about to share with you this evening will allow as many students as possible to attend school closer to home. The rationale for this plan. Now, student accommodation decisions are guided by CBE's planning principles. The accommodation plan that is developed and which we're about to share aligns well with several of these principles. It addresses key CBE planning principles, which are allow students to attend school closer to home, provides program continuity from kindergarten to grade 12, provides equitable access for all students to quality learning environments and choice of programs, uses space and resources effectively. With that, I'll now turn over to Connor, who will take you through the detailed plan. Uh, 
Hi, thank you, Latosha. Um, as she mentioned, my name is Connor McGreesh. I'm a planning analyst with the CBE. Um, today, I'll first talk about a little bit about the community statistics, a little bit of information about the communities where you live, and then we're going to go through the overview of the proposed changes and uh, enrollment projections. So looking a little more closely at your communities, um, so Auburn Bay community is fully built out and it, um, with an estimated population around 18,000 to just shy 19,000 people. Um, it has th three elementary school sites for the CBE. We have the Auburn Bay Elementary School, the new Auburn Bay School, and then the Auburn Bay Middle School. And all told next year with uh, um, three schools, three CB schools and uh, two CSSD schools. So that's the Calgary separate school division. There's going to be five schools in Auburn Bay. So that's a lot of capacity uh, within Auburn Bay. Now, Mahogany uh, community is much, it's a much younger community. So it's much less built out. It's only 37% built out as of the last census in 2019. Um, it's planned for an estimated population of about 30,000 people, 28,000 to 30,000 people. And housing construction here in the community has been a little slower uh, than other communities. Uh, pace of development has slowed down in the last little while, but it is still a very large community. And right now, uh, there are three school sites in Mahogany as well, being such a large community. It has two elementary school sites, and uh, that includes the Mahogany School, and then it also has a middle school site. Seaton is um, only about 5% built out, so there are not a lot of people living in Seaton right now. I know there's a lot of development in Seaton, um, and that's where our current high school is for the area, but there's not a lot of homes built in Seaton right now, so it's only 5% built out, but planned for an estimated 20 to 21,000 people thereabouts. Now, if we look a little more closely at um, the actual plan, this first slide focuses on school grades and how these schools, the opening schools and the um, existing school in Auburn Bay will change over the next two years. So for 2022, um, Auburn Bay and Auburn Bay 2 and Mahogany will be K-4 schools. So the new schools will open K-4 and Auburn Bay will remain K-4. Um, and then Auburn Bay Middle will open as the 5 to 8. In the following school, following school year in 2023, those elementary schools would expand to grade five, and the Auburn Bay Middle would change from a five to eight to a six to nine. So all those students who were in five to eight would just become those grade uh, six to nine students. There would actually be no movement of students between schools in that year. They would just stay at Auburn Bay or they would stay at Auburn Bay Middle. Now, when we look at the map on the next, as you would have seen in your letter, uh, this is just a graphical way or just showing you where students are going to be attending uh, based on the boundaries. So we look at Auburn Bay School uh, and the green boundary. So the green boundary is a larger portion of the community. There's more homes, more students captured in that green portion. And that's going to remain designated to the existing Auburn Bay School. And the remainder of the community, that purple portion, is going to be designated to Auburn Bay number two. Uh, there's a reason for that, and we'll get to that in a minute. And for Mahogany School, uh, it's going to be the whole community is designated to Mahogany. But we are expecting Mahogany School to be uh, to become very full. Uh, so like I said, it's a large community. Uh, there's only one other school in the neighborhood, and that school is a uh, Catholic school division school as well, and it is currently full and overflowing. So there's a lot of unmet demand in Mahogany community. So we expect that that school will be full very quickly and that students who are unable to attend the Auburn or the Mahogany School would be able to attend the Auburn Bay School number two, the second elementary. So that is the reason why Auburn Bay and Auburn Bay School number two have slightly different sized boundaries is to accommodate, uh, make sure there's room for those overflow students. Uh, in terms of Seton, we would see a redesignation for Seton and they would start attending schools in Cranston. So they would be Cranston for K-5 in this instance. And if we go to the next map, Karen, um, it shows Seton there attending uh, Dr. George Stanley for grade six to nine. And the great thing about this plan is, in my mind is, regardless of whether you're in Auburn Bay Middle, uh, sorry, if you're Auburn Bay, Auburn Bay number two or Mahogany School, all students in those two communities will end up at the Auburn Bay Middle School. So if by chance uh, Mahogany School is an overflow situation, a student gets overflowed to Auburn Bay School number two, 
you know, you leave those students would continue on with their school peers into Auburn Bay Middle, but they would also meet up with their community peers from Mahogany and Auburn Bay Middle as well. Uh, the next slide uh, focuses a little bit on student movement. So I'm, ho I'm hoping that this slide helps show kind of how students will move year to year in this plan. It also can help show the reason we propose opening the new schools K-4 in 2022 before expanding to K-5. to So there was some thought behind this and I'll, I'll run through an example. So if you look at the top of the slide, the school students living in Auburn Bay number two boundary. So if you're in the, a new boundary and you're currently in grade four, well, next year you would um, you would graduate from Auburn Bay School and you would enter grade five at the middle school in 2022. And there you would remain. You would start there in grade five and you'd remain until the end of grade nine. Now, if you were a year younger and you were only in grade three, you would graduate from Auburn Bay to Auburn Bay number two and you would enter Auburn Bay School number two for grade four. And then you would just, you would for grade five, as when the school expanded, you would stay for grade five. So you wouldn't have to move schools too often. You would move for uh, grade four, and then you would get two full school years in that building before moving on to grade six at the new middle school. And the same uh, applies for uh, students uh, in the Seton and students leaving um, Mahogany as well, moving into the Mahogany School. Um, now, if we go on to look at some projections, so we're going to review the projections for all the schools involved here, and I'll kind of walk through what's going to happen over the next couple of years at all these schools. Uh, Auburn Bay School will see uh, a big drop in 2022, so that's a combination, you know, if it's just the students leaving Auburn Bay number two, and then it jumps up again in 2023 as a result of that expansion to grade five. So it's it's easy to drop that first year of the new school opening, but then it regains some of that population again with that remaining grade. Um, and then for Auburn Bay in school number two, we see uh, an opening. So that blue area, that blue bar is the home area. So that purple area. So remember that purple area is a little bit smaller on the map. So that's resulted in a slightly smaller home area population in the school, but that's quickly um, you know, made up for by expanding the grade to grade five, and then as well as um, the expectation of receiving mahogany community students who can't fit in that mahogany school into the future. So both elementary schools will be well utilized into the future, as well as if we go to the next slide and look at Auburn Bay Middle, we we see that Auburn Bay Middle gets well utilized as well. So the blue in this chart again is a home area. So that's when I say home area, that's Auburn Bay. Uh, community and the green is the mahogany uh, community. So right away um, we can see that mahogany student mahogany is gonna gonna grow very fast and we'll we'll start to to take up more space in the school. Long term mahogany will likely need an overflow designation outside Auburn Bay. So you can see that in the later years. So 2027, 2028 is when we're anticipating that we might need another school if that is if Mahogany does not get approval for a new middle school by then. And we'll, I'll touch on that in a minute. So this Mahogany projection I feel is reasonably optimistic um, for six to nine for Mahogany. We don't have too many past examples of a new community like Mahogany being designated right next door for their middle school. Auburn Bay, you know, Auburn Bay has been traveling uh, to Nickel for middle school. Mahogany has been traveling to Sherwood. So we're really pleased that Mahogany is going to have an opportunity to be attending uh, right next door. So we feel that with that proximity, we're going to see a lot more interest. A lot more students uh, are going to be attending our CB regular program schools in that area. In terms of when we could possibly expect a middle school in Mahogany, Currently, a middle school mahogany is ranked as our number seventh priority in our capital plan from this spring, this 2021. And the previous capital plan from last year was ranked number 12. So you can see that it's it's climbing. Right? So as mahogany gets built out, more students are attending CBE schools and more people are living there. Um, it's it's ranking can, will continue to be high, if not higher. 
Um, how new school or how new middle schools are ranked in the capital plan? It focuses on um, current K-4 enrollment. It focuses on current grade five to nine enrollment. And it looks at the projected population in the community to a ratio of enrollment to, to housing. And it's also, um, there's points for if there's an existing elementary school. So into the future, Mahogany will, will get a few more points in the ranking because there will be an elementary school. If you're interested in more of that, our capital plan is published on the website. Um, now, if we look at Mahogany School, so this again, based on Mahogany changing to a K-5 in 2023, um, an overflow will be needed for the Mahogany community. As, I'm, as I've touched on a couple times now, it's a very large community and it's likely gonna follow a similar pattern to other schools in the Southeast section of the city. That is to say, an overflow is going to be required probably shortly after opening um, until another until middle school or second elementary is approved. Um, that's going to be the, the future for Mahogany schools. It's going to reach its capacity and we'll have to look for, you know, that second home for students in Upper Bay number two. Um, so as I, as I also mentioned, currently there's one CSSC, Cagliari Catholic School in Mahogany, um, and it also has an overflow in place. So, we're anticipating these students as well as those mahogany students currently not attending Riverbend, but other CBE schools will will kind of come back, be repatriated into their community school. Um, now we'll focus on the other side of the road, Deerfoot on Cranston. Um, Cranston School is the home area. So again, that blue section, it's not expected to remain exactly at current levels. We're expecting it to go down a little bit. That's because Cranston School serves the north portion of the community of Cranston, and that was the first portion of the community, the first half to be built out. So it's it going to experience a slow decline in that home area over the next few years. And for Dr. George Stanley, it's a little more stable in enrollment. Um, the outlook for Dr. George Stanley, it's stable from the home area. There's no substantial increases or decreases in enrollment. This means over the long term, there is predictable amount of space available for the Seton students to be designated there into the future. Now I'm going to hand it over to Danny Breton, and he's going to share some information about transportation. Thank you. Thank you, Connor, and um, good evening. Um, so transportation and the walk zone. So I'll start off by underscoring in the first bullet, uh, no busing anticipated for both of the Auburn Bay Elementary Schools. Um, secondly, you see there how it indicates that the walk zones for Mahogany School and Auburn Bay Middle uh, will be determined this spring and posted on the CBE website. Um, the student uh, transportation eligibility uh, is also identified there. Uh, I, I'd like to underscore that pre-registration um, occurs in the month of May to June uh, for the CBE. Um, and very important for folks to, to pre-register. There's no uh, obligation with that pre-registration in the sense that you have up until the end of September of the subsequent school year to uh, cancel without any cost. So if you were to register in the month of May of 22 and then at the end of September 22 decide that uh, you do not need that service, uh, you could cancel without any cost. Um, in terms of the eligibility um, component also, there are two different uh, types of riders. We have mandated riders, those that are um, legislated under the Educated Act, Education Act, and so those are for those students attending their regular program school and that live beyond 2.4 kilometers. And then we do offer in recognition of the uh, public input we received, uh, a higher level of service because uh, what we've heard is that typically, you know, the smaller the student, um, the the shorter the legs, and so the shorter the distance is is what parents have told us they wanted. So, uh, 1.6 kilometers is the distance uh, for elementary school, and 1.8 kilometers for middle school. And so, if you choose to uh, register for transportation. Um, there is the ability to get transportation within that distance up to 1.6 kilometers and 1.8 kilometers, um, depending again, elementary school or middle school. Um, 
And so with that, uh, I'll now hand you over to uh, Education Director Mike Nelson uh, for the last few slides before it's time for question and answer. Thanks, Danny. Um, the next slide just talks uh, briefly about uh, school naming. Uh, so school naming uh, and names are determined by our Board of Trustees. On October 7th, uh, this past year, the outgoing Board of Trustees decided the following input from the community that the name of the first elementary school in Mahogany would be called Mahogany School. Um, they took in uh, parent and stakeholder feedback and through a survey uh, decided on this name. Uh, work is underway with the naming committee for the second elementary school in Auburn Bay and the new middle school. So just want to talk a little bit about new school registration. Um, so there's some confusion about what will happen. Uh, the CBE is actually moving to a new online registration uh, process. Online registration will involve putting in your address into a form and you will be presented with your designated school to register. So for example, if you live in Mahogany, registering for kindergarten, it will say Mahogany School. Or in the case of Auburn Bay, it will say something to the effect of the Auburn Bay Elementary number two, as we currently don't have the, the official name. There'll be more information regarding uh, registration closer to January 17th. For those students currently in kindergarten to grade seven at Auburn Bay or Mahogany and Seton students who attend Andrew Sibold, Auburn Bay, Nickel, Riverbend and Sherwood schools, you will automatically be registered in their new schools for the 2022-23 school year. So if you are grade one and you live in Mahogany and you're going to a different school and Mahogany is going to be your school, uh, you'll be registered there. If the student is designated to a different school. So let's say um, you live in Auburn Bay and you're currently attending uh, Fairview School for grade six as a traditional learning center. If you attend that school and you want to come back to the new school that's being built, you will let Fairview School know that I want to go back to um, or go to the new middle school as that's my designated school and it's down the street and you'll complete a transfer form, let the school know, and through that process, your child will be registered at that designated school uh, that you're designated to for your community. In talking about uh, next steps, um, we have the session uh, this evening. We had a session on Monday. Um, as of yesterday, we opened up uh, idea boards um, and these uh, provide opportunity for families to get their questions answered and to share their comments with us. After the idea boards close on the 7th, so they open on November 3rd, uh, open till December 7th, we'll review all the feedback and then communicate a decision by December 15th. This way families will have uh, boundary and registration information as you enter into winter break. We're already hearing some questions, so we thought we would share a few of the questions we're hearing and the current answer for those. Um, so we're already hearing from our current middle school principals uh, that there have been inquiries. If we, um, parents are asking if we could open Auburn Bay Middle School with grade nine students. So historically, new middle schools open without grade nine to allow current grade eight students to finish at their current school. We try not to move students to a new school for one year and again the next year. So in this case, we're trying not to move students to the new middle school for the 2022-23 school year and then the following year, the grade 10 year, on to JCS. However, there, this is something that we may be able to consider. So this has already been posted on the idea board and there is opportunity in there that you can like that comment if you or give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down and we'll gather that feedback and make a, a determination of what we're going to look at. Uh, similarly, we anticipate the same question for current grade eight families living in Seton who attend Nickel School and may want to consider attending Dr. George Stanley for grade nine before moving to JCS. So please provide your feedback before December 7th. Another question is, 
we live in mahogany and my child is in Riverbend school in grade five or six, or I've been overflowed uh, from Auburn Bay. Um, will my, how will my student uh, be designated next year? So as I already shared, the student will be automatically enrolled in the new Auburn Bay Middle School for grades six and seven. Um, and so if you're going to be designated to one of those new schools, um, you'll be automatically designated there if you're currently at the designated school in a different community. Um, the other question is, my child is currently attending Andrew Sybil, Nickel, Riverbend, Sherwood. Uh, can they continue attending at this school? So students will automatically be enrolled at the new school based on their this new designation. There may be exceptional circumstances that a parent would need to share with the school principal to determine best placement for that student. An exceptional circumstance, I'll give you an example of when we opened a new school in Cranston, we had a student with a significant vision impairment and that student, instead of them transitioning to a new school and having to again understand that infrastructure of that school, we did uh, provide the opportunity for that student to stay. But uh, basically, in the vast majority of cases, uh, students are expected to attend the new school. Um, and we've also made the great configurations so that all students at minimum would be there for two years. Um, we have opportunity here with new schools being built, and we want to make sure that we have students in them for maximizing our resources. So we also may have some questions. Uh, we are currently attending a different school, school district, but are interested in attending uh, our new designated school in Mahogany, Auburn Bay, or Cranston. Where and when can we register? So as I shared regarding kindergarten, we uh, at this time believe kindergarten and new designated students will register through the online process. Um, within that, um, it is also important to recognize that as I shared earlier, um, if you're at an alternative program such as a TLC or the science uh, alternative school at RT Alderman or Maple Ridge and you want to come back to your community school, you will share with the school that you want to do that, complete a transfer form and that transfer form will be uh, sent uh, to the school and uh, the process will occur. If you're currently attending potentially uh, another school, uh, private school, etc. As long as you meet the uh, regulations within the education and administrative regulations, you can uh, register uh, for that school. Um, at this time, um, if you have other questions, please uh, put them in the chat box and uh, they'll be answered. Uh, as we uh, move through this presentation. I'm not seeing any questions right now in the queue, so feel free to add them here and we can get to those. This, I don't currently have any questions um, in the queue right now. So maybe we'll just wait another minute or two. Um, I see that we still do have attendees with us. Um, OK, we have a question here. Um, we're moving to Auburn Bay. If we haven't moved by September 1st, is it possible to apply as an out of attendance area student? Uh, so if you're moving to Auburn Bay and you've already purchased a home and you had a um, an agreement to purchase that home, most often we can use that to make sure your child starts at school. If you think you're going to purchase a, a home, um, we wouldn't register you until you are a resident of uh, Auburn Bay. Once you're a resident of Auburn Bay, um, 
you would go to the school and it's your designated school and you would be registered there. Thanks, Mike. There's no new questions come through um, yet, so we may want to make, wait a couple minutes. Just going to go back to that question. Um, we will not, uh, in almost, in most likely, we will not be taking any um, OTA boundary students at these schools because, as Connor shared, the um, projections over time that these schools will basically all be full uh, into capacity um, within the needs of the communities uh, that they serve. So we'll wait uh, another minute, but uh, I see that some of the attendees are uh, already probably uh, uh, heading for the, something more interesting with their families. So I do want to thank you for your participation. Uh, this session has been recorded. It will be posted tomorrow. Uh, we do encourage you to share any additional thoughts or questions you have on the idea boards or potentially going onto the idea boards and uh, liking a comment or potentially sharing that you're not in favor of that idea. Um, and we'll circulate an email to all families in Auburn Bay, Mahogany and Seton tomorrow with links to those. We value your feedback. I want you to know it will be considered as you make uh, this decision and enjoy, uh, potentially enjoy the rest of the evening unless we have any other questions. Yep, there's one question that just came in here. Um, in Mahogany, when the elementary school opens, you said it would fill potentially quickly. I may have missed it, but did you say the overflow would go to Auburn Bay? If so, who would be considered overflow by boundaries or order of registration? Yeah, I can talk to that one. So um, you're correct. The students from Mahogany would be directed to Auburn Bay community, but it would be to Auburn Bay School number two. So at the point when Mahogany is in a situation where they can't, you know, accommodate all the students from Mahogany community, they then we would redirect those students to Auburn Bay School number two. So again, that's why Auburn Bay School number two has a slightly smaller boundary than the uh, Auburn Bay School. Uh, it's because we're anticipating those students from Mahogany. Uh, and then to the second part of your question, if so, who would be considered overflow by boundaries or order of registration so i'll tell you right now it's uh, never by order of registration we're not first come first serve so there will be a registration deadline to be entered into a lottery so that is the two that is two days before the wednesday before teachers convention and so that's usually uh sometime second week in february and we would then gather all registrations and then the walk so and then the lottery process would apply so the lottery process looks at a couple of factors so it looks at students who are in the walk zone students who have siblings in the school and students who you know live outside the walk zone and then those are prioritized based on those filters and then names are drawn uh, for space in the available spaces in the school and anyone who is not drawn would then uh, be overflowed to auburn bay school number two Um, I'll just can carry on. I see the next question. Do you anticipate enough room at Mahogany School to accommodate all children the first year of opening? Uh, yes, we do anticipate uh, that there's going to be enough room for all the students the first year of opening. Um, I'll just keep reading if that's all right with anyone. Uh, Adele, if you feel like you want to talk, you can read the questions, but I will just keep going. Uh, where do you apply for the new Mahogany School? Who decides who gets in? So the we, uh, Mike indicated uh, during his registration section. Um, so if you're a, a new, if you're new to the school, new to the CBE and entering in kindergarten, for example, you would apply online. Um, but if you are 
currently attending a CBE school and you're not in one, um, one of your designated schools for Mahogany, so you're not in Riverbend or you're not in Sherwood, but you're going, your, your child might be attending a different CBE school, then you would have to apply to transfer. So you let your existing school know and you would fill out a transfer request form. And who decides who gets in? So I kind of touched on that. If down the, in the future, if uh, the school is full, the community will get a notice. There'll be communication and we'll say, um, Mahogany School is full, your designated overflow it is Auburn Bay number two, and then here are the steps. And so it goes back to that lottery process I just mentioned. Um, question, does being closer to the school determine attendance? Um, so as I've kind of been talking, yes and no, lot, the lottery process, if a school is full and in um, an overflow is in place, uh, proximity through the walk zone is one of the, the factors that determines your priority in the, in the lottery draw. So yes, but not exactly. So if you're closest, you don't have a higher chance than someone who's a few blocks away. It's, it's kind of in like buckets. So like students, in, uh, in the walk zone who have a sibling in the school already are a higher priority than students who live outside the walk zone that don't have a sibling in the school. So there's a few priority levels and um, there is more information on the CB website as well if you search for lottery. Um, I'll just again keep going just to confirm for K4 New Mahogany School. The registration starts on January 17th, 2021. For my daughter, who is in grade seven attending Sherwood School, will all be automatically be transferred to the new Auburn Bay School. Correct. They will automatically be registered for grade eight next year. You do not have to do anything. The registration date is uh, is not relevant for you since your uh, child's in grade seven. They will just automatically roll over. Um, is there an expected overflow for kindergarten at Mahogany School for 2022-23? I believe the chart shows this is not expected. That's correct. We do not expect the first year to uh, have any overflow in place. Where are the idea boards on the school project? Sorry, question is, where are the idea boards? On the school project page? Uh, yes, so you can find it through uh, managing space for students. There's a link to the Auburn Bay uh, project and there you'll find these recordings. You'll find links to uh, the letters or you'll find the letters posted there and you also find links to the idea boards. Uh, question, if a new kindergartner has an older sibling going to Mahogany, would that also be taken into consideration designation? Uh, yeah. So if you're assuming you're referencing again that lottery process, uh, short answer is yes. So it goes back to those different priorities and the the different kind of buckets of students, uh, the different buckets students can fall into depending on if they're in the walk zone, if they have siblings or not. So it, there's a lot more detail on the website um, that you can you can read up on. So I think that covers all the questions so far. Yep, thanks, so, Connor. That covers all the questions. There's no new questions that have come up so far. Just wait another minute uh, here. Um, lots of great questions and uh, thanks for uh, sharing those. If there's anything else that we can provide clarity on, uh, please post. Uh, there's a new question here. If a child attends Auburn Bay School this year but is out of boundaries for it next year, can they stay at uh, at the Auburn Bay School? And does day home play a part in this? Um, I'd probably have to have a bit more clarity. Um, my understanding is that Auburn Bay School doesn't currently have uh, Oda Boundary students, uh, so you might want to uh, connect with uh, Principal Cullen. Um, however, if the question is 
uh, you will be living in Auburn Bay 2 boundary. The expectation is that you will be moving to Auburn Bay uh, to school. And one of the reasons we share this information uh, now is so that families can work through um, child care needs, etc. Uh, the next question here, if you get into Mahogany School for Kindergarten for 2022, do you need to apply every year or are you automatically in each year? So I'll speak to that one. When you are in the school, you're in there for the duration of the grades it offers. So there would be no lottery a second time. You don't have to reapply. So if we get to the point or if and when we get to the point mahogany is in a lottery situation and you apply kindergarten and you're accepted and you're because you you know your name is drawn the lottery and you're accepted you're in there for the remainder of the grades of that school but say you aren't accepted and say um, you're directed to the overflow school what would happen in that case is your name would then go on to a prioritized wait list so those same groupings of students um, i was mentioning earlier so names get prioritized and then if a space becomes available because a student say moves out of the community or uh, attends an alternative program or for whatever reason and a space becomes available the school would then go to that prioritized callback list and uh, students will be called back to the mahogany school as soon as space becomes available but we're not there yet, so um, well, the school will be able to accommodate those students next year. So hopefully um, that helps put uh, put any worries aside for now. Um, there's another lottery question here. Is the lottery process only for the kids in overflow or everyone, even those kids who live within walking distance to Auburn Bay School? All right, I think we're getting a little bit uh, down the lottery rabbit hole here, but uh, it's not, we will not apply the, there's going to be no lottery in Auburn Bay. Um, the, the students who are in Auburn Bay, will there's going to be plenty of room for Auburn Bay students at the Auburn Bay schools. Down the line for Mahogany School, um, if an overflow is in place, it will apply only to Mahogany School and those students who are unsuccessful in the lottery would be directed to an Auburn Bay school. Um, so it is not. Hold on, I'm just going to pause for a second because I think I get the essence maybe of the question now. And I think maybe the, the, the question is more around, would we consider students who can walk to the Auburn Bay school number two in the lottery process? That is something that we have not that is not a situation that we've encountered in the past. And I think that's what the question's asking. So I think that would be something we would have to talk about uh, internally, um, but it is, a, it is a very good point that you raised. So um, we will bring that up in, in future discussions, but I don't know what the outcome of that will be just right now. Um, the next question here, I'm going to move to Mahogany in spring and I have two children in four and six, grade four and six. What should be my steps to register them and when should I start it? Uh, once you have moved uh, or you have that purchasing agreement, uh, you would uh, complete the registration information. Um, so if it's in early January, you would uh, submit, um, or once a uh, principal is in place, you could connect with the principal, uh, share your situation. Um, at least if you had a purchase agreement, um, you potentially be able to start uh, that work, or once you've moved in, you can definitely um, work with the principal about getting your child enrolled because that'd be your designated school. I'm not seeing any more questions at the moment. I'll just go back to that last question because the students were in grade four and six, so you'd have one child in Mahogany and the other student would be uh, enrolled at Auburn Bay Middle School.
All right, so thank you for your participation. Um, we do want to hear your ideas and feedback. Um, this will be shared again, uh, I think, via email and posted on the school websites. Um, I just want to, again, thank you for your time this evening and enjoy the rest of your evening.